Okay, this is me talking. I'm trying to see what it looks like. It looks kind of okay. And then Lance, say something into your mic. Something into my mic. Wow, it took a minute. I, am, I know, I was going to be clever, but and then, right. nothing happened. Okay. And then Allie, say something. Okay. Um, my Twitter isn't loading. What the hell? I'm trying to catch up before I put it away for while we record. <laughs> And, nice. Uh, Hell yeah. It's not letting me do that. There are only, no, no only online as fuck. The only two people in my life who lecture me about Twitter are Lance and Chris. I don't lecture you about Twitter. I lecture you about being online. Same thing. Being, being on your phone. Same oh, difference. Pat, Pat lectures me about being on my phone like every fucking day. I don't care yeah. if you're on Facebook, Twitter, fucking Duolingo, fucking Tinder. I don't care. You're on your phone during the podcast. I'm like, why am I even, who am I talking to? It helps to have energy in the studio. Okay, energy. Energy. You got the the energy going? Uh, no. The audience audience picks it up and it transmits. Is it 25 cycle energy or is it 60 cycle? (laughs) (laughs) Ho, 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 ho. Sorry. All right. Let's say hunker down. Hunker down. Hunker, hunker down. down, y'all. Hunker, hunker down. down. Hunker down. Hunker down. Hunker down. H- hunker down. Hunker down. Okay, we're back. Uh, we're going to try and hammer out the rest of the stuff because so many things happen to, uh, especially to VAR, um, and there's just so little time just to cover them all. Uh, I would like, I would love to talk about the Saints game, but I really feel like if we talk about the Saints game, we're going to talk about the whole Saints season, and that it's is... the Saints future. That is a whole the other... history of their franchise, basically. That's a whole other show. This like, season is all about the history of their franchise. Well... It's, it's well, a, the, the whole NFL is falling apart anyway. And it's true. Frankly, I think it's a little overdue. <laughs> it's Allie hates the NFL. It's I, a, I'm over it, man. It's, it's hard about, not to. Hard to like. There's so much. There's so much, and we could go on, and I feel like if we start talking about it, we're all going to have like an opinion about the NFL and about the Saints and about this and that and the other thing. It's going to go on forever and ever and ever, and... It's a whole other show. And well, I'm just going to go on forever and ever and ever about my trip to see the uh, Total Eclipse. So let's do that instead. Y'all may have forgot about this fucking thing that happened uh, back in uh, August, uh, what was it, 21st? It's so long ago. Uh, but I haven't because it was one of the fucking uh, greatest uh, vacations of my life. I started, okay, so uh, me and my homegirl Tisha from the Bayou... Um, I've never traveled before. And when you travel with somebody, you really learn about them. Like, if you can make it through a trip with somebody, you're doing pretty fucking good. Mm-hmm. So it's the first early test, right? So uh, everything's been going really great with us, so we decide to go on the test. Take the test. I she didn't realize was, this was a test. I thought this was... But okay, I mean, this, it's, it's an unmentioned No, test. but this is... Well, you just said I, it's I, a thing now, and now it's a bigger yeah, thing. Yeah, in now. retrospect, I'm going back and... Oh, you're retconning it, it in as a you thing. You don't speak it about it. Because before. it went well. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, I, I I could tell you about a horrible vacation I've had with a girl I've dated. No, so. but we're talking this one. This one was good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Spoiler alert, it ended up okay. <laughs> okay, good. Damn um, it. I didn't to... almost night, get everybody. left in Marfa, Texas with no ride and on the 4th of July. Hmm. That didn't happen. Okay. So, um, Where did we, you go? We started out in Raceland. Um, we were going to take her car, um, but I surprised her by showing up in a convertible Mustang that I had rented. Um, I was at the uh, Enterprise rental car, and they were like, um, all right, here's your car. And I was like... Is it red? And they're like, no, it ain't red. I was like, it ain't fucking blue, is it? And they're like, no, it ain't blue. I'm like, all right, I'll take it then. It's silver. So they're showing me the little Mustang. It's fucking beautiful car. Handled beautifully. Just an amazing, amazing thing. They were like, for $10 more, you can get the hard top over there. And they pointed at it. And it was a little convertible BMW. And y'all know how I feel about the British. So I was like, fuck Uh, that. You want to tell them? No. Or should I? What? We got German. Yeah, it's not. Anyways, it's European. <laughs> Fuck it, I'm not doing it. All right, not taking it. All right. 
I'm going across America. It's going to be in an American car. It's going to be in a fucking Ford Mustang. Okay. So I got it. I went and picked her up. Surprised her. We left. We drive straight to the schoolhouse. Not going to talk too much about that. We've that the landlord of this property. Yeah, and there was no wrestling going on in the schoolhouse, so therefore it's not interesting. Oh, there was wrestling. Oh, all right, but not interesting. (laughs) Jesus. Uh, Had another beautiful night at the schoolhouse. It's always beautiful there. It's all wood. It's all old wood. Um, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk too much about it because (laughs) the hipsters will find out about it and then they'll want to go up there. Um, Left out of there, went to a cabin just about, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes away um, where there was no cell service or anything like that. Uh, on the banks of a creek. Um, no light pollution whatsoever. Just, and there's a new moon, because you've got to have a new moon for an eclipse. In the middle of Mississippi, or in... Uh, in the Homochito Forest. Just, I don't know, about two hours north of here. So um, in Mississippi, in the dark, in the woods. No cell service whatsoever. And you are... Just a, a creek. This is good. Yes. There's it's a cabin in the woods, just like a Sam Raimi film. Man. Yeah, that sounds great. What are you talking about? It was awesome. About? This is because there was on, the only food around. I go we didn't there. have any food. The only There's food we had to go the fucking woods was get from a, a family dollar that was right near there. Mm-hmm. So we sped on over there, got that, came out to the creek. Immediately, as, there's no one around. Yeah. It's just a creek, and fucking the cabin is about I don't know, a little walk away. Okay. Immediately, I just get out to the little bed where the where the creek probably overflows and moves a bunch of shit around. And then it un, then it goes back down. So there's this big beach there that's all nice and sandy and stuff. Immediately, I just get out there. Bam! Clothes are gone. I'm like fuck it. I'm just gonna be naked as fuck out here. No one's around. There's a couple of houses far, far, far away. Mm-hmm. Sit in the creek, all naked. Rub my butt down into the sand. Everything's beautiful. My rings instantly just become all clean and stuff just from the water flowing in it and me rubbing my hands in the sand. We're drawing stuff. It's fucking amazing. We go into the house, hang out. The lights go out. You know, the sun sets. Or yeah, okay. The sun goes out. The big light goes out. I, I, I thought by this point we were going to find out that you were being watched the entire time already. Maybe but. we were. Because it just sounded like that's what you were setting up. Zero no. fucks were given. Okay. We, we could have been watched the whole time. Okay. They got quite a show. There's no twist. I, I was waiting There's for There's no it. twist. This no. is all... It's a standard like a narrative here. Okay. Um, Fine. You're looking for like some O. Henry type ending. Yeah. Um, There's yeah. not one. All right. Shit. Um, they weren't wrestling the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a, our imagination. Um... We hang out. That night we go back out by the creek. Spread a blanket out. Butt ass naked. The fucking universe is over us. You can see the fucking Milky Way. You can see little fucking satellites moving by up there. Shooting stars. There's fireflies. Crickets and frogs and all that shit. We're just like fucking one with the forest. Mm. Butt ass naked too. Right. And then the axe murderer shows up. No, 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 no. Everything's cool, man. All right. Everything's cool. We go back up to the house, go to sleep. And then the raccoons get your stuff. This is a pregame. We're going to see a fucking, the total eclipse of the fucking sun. Right. Something has not happened in America since the 70s. Right. America's totally different now. All our lives are totally different now. Well. This has been built up. Jeff's hating on it back home. People who aren't going are clearly hating on it. No one can find their glasses. I didn't go, but I wish I had. You fucking should have. I should have. I'm going to get into that. Yeah. So, we leave the fucking cabin. And we're so hyped. Because we've already seen a fucking celestial show that was well worth the fucking trip. Just to get away from light pollution. Yeah, that is the best. Yeah, you just sit up. You can see fucking nebulas. You can see the whole fucking... 
Milky Way, and it fucking rotates, you know? Mm-hmm. As the Earth rotates, it moves across the sky. Yeah, it's space. Anywhere you look, you can just kind of right. fucking... If you just stare into one spot long enough, you'll see a little fucking thing move by, you know? Yeah. Like, you're part of fucking... You are, you transcend almost, right? And we're butt-ass naked. Well, that's fun. Love was made. It was fucking awesome. So the next morning, we get back in this fucking convertible... We put the top down. It's about fucking nine or ten miles away from any fucking main road. And it's a winding road through the Homachito forest, you know. All kinds of stuff. Turkeys are hurrying out of the way, you know, as we go through in our little Ford Mustang, right? Mm-hmm. Performance vehicle. And we're hitting those little curves. Wow. You know, we're waiting to the last moment before we hit that curve, you know. And because it's car is this brand fucking new and it's made to go fast and handle well. It's just taking everything we fucking get. No, no, we're not worried about the car failing at all. We're just so into it. And it's all these curves. Bam, bam. And we're about to go. We're about to go on this fucking great vacation. We've just had this fucking great night. And then you hit a deer. No. All the while, while we're doing this, Adele's someone like you it's just fucking blasting through the fucking speakers. Wow, why? Because it's just a because they chose amazing to pop to that, song. Apparently. It's just an, it's just that she builds. Mm-hmm. You should play this in the background sure. while I'm describing. Yeah, during because we're both just so fucking hyped. That you settle down. That you found a girl. Married now, I heard that your dreams came true. Guess she gave you things I didn't give to you. Oh, friend, why are you so shy? Ain't like you to hold back or hide from the light. Hate to turn up out of the blue, uninvited, but I couldn't stay away. I couldn't fight it. I had hoped you'd see my face and that you'd be reminded that for me it isn't over. Never mind, I'll find someone like you. We get on the road, we take a little fucking drive through a bunch of like old southern towns that sell fried chicken and old gas stations like you do on those old highways, you know. You don't take the freeways, you don't take the double nickel, you take those little fucking highways to get up there. We end up in Jackson, we're staying at the Hilton, it just so happens to be a uh, jazz and blues festival happening in Jackson. Jackson also, I don't know if y'all know this, is the most radical city in America. Hell yeah, the, it is. They have the most radical mayor in America. Right. So they say. Does not for one second feel like the most radical city in America no. when you're there. It's very normal. Very quiet. There's a jazz and blues festival happening and all the jazz and blues artists who just so happen to be like ludicrous and um, uh, Dougie Fresh, sure, sure, it's, sure. it's a lot. It's got it's a little like, bit of case of yeah, jazz fest. I Quint Davis, I yeah, yeah. Uh, Quint there. Davis. Uh, they're all staying in our hotel and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's We're, got it's got that one guy from New Edition. Yeah, it's got um, <laughs> Johnny Gill. <laughs> it's got Johnny Gill in it. Took me a second. <laughs> Um, we're hanging out and people are coming up to us. I guess it's because of my sideburns. They're going, are y'all, are y'all, are y'all with the Jazz and Blues Festival? We're like, no, we're just passing through. We're going to the Eclipse, bro. Um, we go that night to another schoolhouse 
but they've got they turned into bars and restaurants and stuff and there's a music venue in the back there's a place called saltine there that um serves artisanal crackers did really yep wait that is a i wasn't bullshitting you when i told you that explain this um there's a place called Saltine. It's called and, Saltine. Yeah, and they have a lot of uh, appetizers that they serve with little saltines that they make there. They make their own saltines. Yeah, they're slightly better than normal saltines. It, they seem a little fresher and a little crispier. Okay, but that's not all they serve. They, they put things on them. Yeah, like smoked tuna dip and little oysters. And that shit they've like actually that. made. It's an right. oyster bar and shit like that. Okay, but with... But, yeah. Everyone's super nice. It's very segregated. <clears throat> There's plenty of black folks and white folks... All up in the restaurant. So it's very integrated. Integrated. I'm sorry. Okay. You're right. Uh, also, there was a Greyhound bus station across the street from the hotel that was very Art Deco and everything, and the Freedom Riders did some shit there. Oh, okay. Uh, everything, a lot of things were named after they, Medgar Evers. They Freedom Road. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was some Freedom Riding shit going on. Mm-hmm. So uh, I could tell that we were in a civil rights uh, center. Um, their mayor, the civil most radical rights. mayor in America... Sorry. Chokwe Antar the, Lumumba. Yes. His daddy, I, I like, I, I had heard about him and then I looked him up and they were like, oh, he's dead. I was like, no, his daddy's dead. His daddy fucking had a heart attack, went to the fucking doctor. He's the mayor, goes to the fucking hospital. It's like, I'm having these heart attack symptoms. They're like, yeah, man, well, you know, you're going to have to wait. And then he dies. Nobody fucking knows what happened to him or, you know, they're like, oh, he had a heart attack. He died. Now his son is in charge, and he's going to make it the most radical city in America. Didn't seem to be so much, but very nice place. <laughs> we go see. What, I, what um, he's expecting it to be just, like. He also he walks, just sued the hospital where his dad died. Well, be, fucking right, because, because it sounds like some shady shit must yeah, have gone down. Yeah. Like, I, what, what his you, daddy was a radical, and then suddenly dies. What were you expecting? It doesn't take the, a whole lot. What were you expecting to feel when you walked into the most radical city in America besides... I mean, were you like... I went into Jackson thinking Mississippi City. I was not expecting any of this. Once I got there, I kind of got myself up to speed. Oh, okay. Just by looking around and like going, oh, okay, and then some things started occurring to me, and then I looked it all up. Okay. It was very nice. So uh, I thought maybe We you were- go see Kristen Diable, a New Orleans singer-songwriter, who I happen to have a tattoo, a big tattoo on my back. For one of her songs called True and Natural Man, which I fucking love. It's an awesome okay. song. So I have a big tattoo on I my back. I didn't know that was an homage. Yeah, it's an homage to a song that my buddy Casey plays the guitar on. The guitar is really one of the best parts of the song. Yeah, I kind of thought it was like a beer commercial or something. Yeah, might as well be. Yeah. It's a very beer commercial song. I love it. tattooed on my back we got her to fucking sign my back also while sure. we were there you have to we waited in line with a um, very William Faulkner type southern playwright dude who was writing a song about a naked Jesus or something like that and his mm. um, his friend Maxine and stuff like that they were like southern liberals there's always a guy like that there were he was a caricature of some 
yeah. Southern Gothic type fucking writer or something like that. But he was super nice, and, and everyone in, in that crowd in five was super years, nice. in five years, Juggalo could be. Yeah, could write a parable of the Juggalos. Sure. We go outside. There's two girls sitting on a bench. We're like, what's a good place to get a little nightcap around here? She was like, just go in there. And she points across the street to this, like, diner that's closed. She was like, go in there, walk through the door, walk straight to the back, push that door open, and there's a little bar back there. I was like, fuck you. I am not fucking doing that. Right, that's that place is closed. I don't know you. I don't know that fucking place. There ain't no fucking bar back there. We convinced them, those two girls, to go back with us. Sure as shit, we open the door. We're in a fucking Massapequa, look, New York looking fucking diner. I mean, like, everything in it looks just like the Greyhound bus station. There, Jackson must have fucking come up in the 50s. They must have built a bunch of shit in, like, the 40s and 50s. Everything there still, you, every now and then you'll just come across a building that looks fucking straight out of their heyday. So they must have boomed then and then sort of tapered off. This is one of them places. The whole little mini mall looks like that. Mm-hmm. We walk back to the back. There's a um, there's indeed a bar back there that must have been the old pharmacy of this place. I don't know if it was a diner and then a pharmacy, or back then they had diners, pharmacies and diners or whatever. But there was a little bar back there, and we had several drinks with those girls, and they were very nice. We went back to the hotel, mm-hmm. tried to catch up with Dougie Fresh, it didn't happen. Trips of failure. Oh, yeah, we're not even one of them was. You're not even, not even at the eclipse. Uh, right. I know. This is going to go on a while. Okay. Y'all can go ahead and be online as fuck if you want. No, I'm, I don't care. I mean, I've, I've been waiting for a stuff. while to debrief about this trip. Okay. Yeah, and I've been fine. holding it all in. Yeah. So be online as fuck if you want. It's no, fine. we're listening. We're I've gone attention. from Jackson to Memphis before, and I've taken 61. Yeah. This time I decided to take forty nine because we're sixty one and sixty one and forty nine are like the fucking old freeways right. of Mississippi going from either Mobile or from going from the Gulf Coast to Memphis. You you took one of these two fucking roads, right? And I had gone up sixty one and it was really amazing. And I was thinking about doing it again. I was like, well, forty nine's right there. Let me just take forty nine. We go up there. It's a two lane highway. Some ways it's. A, four lanes some other ways and we go through all these towns and then there's like a period for about three hours no white folks we just do not see any white folks every store we stop at everyone we pass on the highway everyone we see out on their house absolutely you're going straight through the fucking delta no white folks anywhere every little town has a little water tower with their little town written on it beautiful little lots of agriculture by this time, we've already gone from cane to cotton. Now, instead of cane on the side of the road, now we got cotton on the mm-hmm. side of the road. So we finally show up. We stop at Clarksdale a little bit, you know, hang out at the Ground Zero Blues Club where that Morgan Freeman owns. Did you stop on the side of the road and sing into a can? Nope. Okay. <laughs> we did not do that, but that is a, the exact area where if right. we were. Uh, Everett, Daniel. Everett McGill and them right. did do that. Okay, um, just a beautiful stretch of of the South uh, in the Mississippi Delta, where all that fucking fertile ground is, and all those fucking blues guys came from. End up in Memphis, went to the uh, Withers Museum. Well, we went to we went to Beale Street. That's a mistake. Which was like fucking. It was New Orleans like. Yeah. Like there was buggy drivers. There was lots of fucking, like, neon and places that sold the culture real fucking hard. Mm-hmm. But we did have to get wanded yep. before we went there. Like, yep. you had to fucking show an ID and get wanded just to go to Beale Street. So you know they're considering doing something like that here, or that's been talked about. They are. They are. And I, I, I'm not saying I felt any safer by having them, <laughs> them having done that. Um, I did feel a little bit... Like more cheesy, yeah. Like everything was like, you know, super cheesy there. But no uh, shock pole, no like no gi- shock pole. Giant hole where the no. drains run into the sewer. There the, were people right. like with with little agendas and stuff like that. And then 
Uh, I didn't really check this, but I think their stadium must be built right up on Beale Street. Because there was a huge building that I didn't have a chance to look at or anything that's built up like right. That was like on one side of Beale Street, there's a huge wall. And there's obviously some convention center or a huge monolithic type building. There's an arena that on looks, the other is side. in the shape of a pyramid, but I don't think it's... I saw the, that. That was the a Bass Pro shot. The Bass Pro shot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we saw that coming in, and that seemed a little weird. A pyramid, a Bass Pro shot. You know, Egyptian culture and Bass Pro, sh- <laughs> it was incongruous. Okay. It was clearly that they, they, they must have built that pyri- pyramid. Shit didn't work out the way they wanted it to, and Bass Pro Shop. Oh, yeah, was no, like, that's it, exactly it, what it, happened. It, it, it was an arena. And then it, like a, then it became a Bass Pro <laughs> Eventually, yeah. So. <laughs> I think uh, Accidental Cajun had recommended the Withers Museum, so we went there. Fucking awesome. It was uh, Martin Luther King's personal photographer, and they have all of his photos there, um, and it just went on and on. He took pictures of um, Ike Turner and uh, a lot of the music scene in Memphis as it was coming up, and everyone in there was super nice. Uh, There was obviously a collector there because he was getting showed around. And um, um, there is an arena right next to Beale Street, the FedEx Forum, where the Grizzlies play. Okay, oh, yeah, that's right. that was right there. FedEx. Yes, they must have built their culture right into their little basketball team. Mm. There was a um, collector there, and he was looking at some pictures of Ike and Tina, and he said um, to this girl that was showing him, it, he was like, "You know, rumor has it he was a little rough with her." <laughs> And I was like, I always laughed out loud. I was like, oh, god damn. Rumor has it there was a fucking whole movie by a little rough with her. I think he beat the fucking shit out of her a couple times. Uh, so, And they were getting way more attention than, uh, I guess they didn't know that I was a dirty boy, Lance Vargas, who owned a guy. Know, and they didn't pay me in t shedding attention. So we asked them for some, um, where a good place to eat was. They you sent us call to a place, a little... Um, a couple of doors down that had a fucking fried bologna sandwich that was the second best fucking thing I ate on the entire trip. Dang. It was thick ass bologna yeah. and it was fried and I hadn't eaten all day and it was the shit. There was a nice little band in there playing. Uh, it was nice. It was all the way on the end of Beale Street too. At the fucking dark end of the street. You yeah. Know? It was good. I didn't know they had fried bologna down there. They did. It was like seven dollars. Now I now I'm looking for some fried bologna. So turkey if anyone the, who hears turkey that, and the wolf. No, no, I want my own fried bologna. I okay. want to fry it up myself. Okay. Besides, I'm I can't go to Turkey and the Wolf because it's just how much shit I hear about it. It's like fuck that. I know that's a whole other thing in which I could get into, but I won't overhype when we do the Saints episode. I'm trying to speed it up. So we go back. We're staying at the Econo Lodge. We did not go to the disco where they only serve 40s because the line was too long. Not going to get into that for brevity's <laughs> sake. There was a disco where they only serve 40s. The line was too long. Okay. We're not going to go there. We went back to the Econo Lodge where we were staying. It was a little rough. There was just like groups of dudes just kicking it in the hallway, fucking shooting the shit and talking and drinking beers and shit. We went swimming in the pool though, nevertheless. Everything was cool. We decided to go further to Paducah, which is where we were watching. Yeah, this is where the eclipse actually happens. In yeah, we're getting Kandu- to that. We're getting to that, Jeff. Okay. We're not there yet because we still have to no. get there. Uh, uh, we the- take the west bank of the river. We go over that iconic bridge in, Miss- in Memphis, and we head up all the way through places called uh, Arkansas, a place called Missouri. And then, right when we're about to leave, whatever the fucking big highway we're on is... 57. Is that what it is? Mm-hmm. And then you're pulled over by ice. Nope, nope, nope. Oh. Nothing bad happens on this trip. Oh, okay. They tell us to get off on this road and Paducah is that way. There is a fucking bridge that looks like the first GNO bridge. Yep. But two lanes. It's just one row going this way, one row going that way. And big fucking semis are coming, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, holy shit, this bridge is fucked up. I was way more scared than I ever was on the Huey. 
even if there was a fucking train there. This shit was fucking intense. We go over it. As we're going over it, it goes, there's a sign that says, you're now leaving Missouri. And you're entering Illinois. And I'm like, cool, fucking an extra state. A fucking northern state at that. We just fucking left the south. Sort of. We're on a fucking trip. And it goes, you're also, in addition to leaving Missouri and going into Illinois, you're also going over the Mississippi River. I'm like, all right, this is awesome. I'm going from one state to the other, and also I'm going over a fucking the Mississippi River. I'm going to the East Bank. Cool. About a minute after we get off that bridge, it tells us to go one more. 30 seconds later, exact same fucking type of bridge. We start going over this motherfucker, right? And it goes, you're now leaving Illinois. You're going into Kentucky. And you're going over the Ohio River. Yep. And at this point, I realize, fuck, I'm in some fucking super fucking, like, all kinds of fucking shit is happening. I'm at the fucking point where the two fucking, yeah. where all these fucking rivers and all these fucking states converge. And that's shit where like Huck that. and Jim were trying to get to. Yeah, right? that's what Cookie and the guy I'm staying with in Paducah said. Yeah. It was a Mark Twain-esque moment. Anyways, I'm taking all this fucking in because it's fucking just... Like, so much. The signage keeps you informed, so that's helpful. Well, yeah. I had to really get on Google Maps and, like, okay. zoom out <laughs> to really look at it. Like, if I'd have known, I would have stopped and, like, I, I like the way that, it. like, as your trip goes, like, you learn about these things as you're doing them. Like, you are... Well, like, I don't have fucking time to sit around and fucking... That, even Jackson. Like, you, you get to Jackson, you learn about Jackson... Once you're there, well, I mean, I'm not, I'm not in a single place for longer than 24 hours. That's true. Yeah, like just, no, like we were never in the car longer than right. six hours. So right. it was it's like just, bop, 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 bop. Also, you got to find a hotel room. You got to find a fucking yeah. place to eat. You got to find something to do. You got to make sure you have booze. Yeah. We were eating fucking deer sausage and cheese on crackers sometimes. Just Saltines. Even. We didn't have anything to eat. Mm-hmm. Wait, so you didn't get a, ho- a hotel room or whatever before you got there? No, we got it, but after the, after I done booked us a fucking hotel room and got us something to do, I didn't really have time to sit there on Wikipedia. I run my own business, man. <laughs> I had to make my own product I, and I run thought, my own business. I thought for a second that like you had gone on this road trip without booking anything, and you were like finding a hotel as you got to. Places. I booked most of the stuff about a week before. Okay. So all that hype that you had heard about the hotel rooms being booked up yeah. for the eclipse and the traffic being fucked up and there not being any gas. There's never going to be any gas. Not fucking true. There was all, all that stuff was fine. Well, that's good. So what was Paducah like? Because Jason Berry specifically said that Paducah was a shit show during all of this because he was up there too and he was on Facebook saying, don't go to Paducah. It's full of people. It's crazy. It's just more than Paducah can handle. Um... And it was you, a little busy. It, okay. was, I, it was like, I always got a beer. I always got something to eat. They seemed like they were a little busy. Okay. They were nothing compared to fucking Mardi Gras. Okay. Like, it was nothing compared to New Orleans. Like, right. They were just a little hurried. We breezed into town. Now, by this time, we're in corn. We've gone from cane to cotton to corn now. Now, mm-hmm. corn is on the side of the road. Cane to cotton to corn. Cane to cotton to corn. Um, my buddy Cookie's there. He used to run a bunch of punk rock clubs in uh, Pensacola. Uh, he's a Bigfoot. He appreciates Bigfoot and enthusiast of Bigfoot. So okay. I brought him a little Bigfoot piece of art. He added to his collection of Bigfoot paintings that he buys on eBay. Okay. <laughs> um, we went down to downtown Paducah. Paducah is like fucking Mayberry. There's just fucking nothing <clears throat> wrong with it. Mm. Like, did you go to one of the quilting stores? No, we went by the quilting museum. Yeah, um, it's the quilting capital of the United States, also- and the National Quilting Museum is there. Yeah, um, there were some Civil War battles there. The Illinois River is there. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a flood wall because they got flooded real bad. Yeah, um, and they have lots of like. Um, Pawnee type uh, murals 
painted on the flood wall, and they all looked in like that Pawnee style, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. There was the um, East. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. <laughs> exactly. It's the best way I could describe it. Yeah. There was um, a group of dudes that were in orange jumpsuits that were like just walking around picking stuff up and stuff like that. And um, I saw them and I was like, oh, these guys are like, uh, you know, county convicts and they're just out here. What it sounds like. You know, picking up stuff. And then they like kind of go and they like stand next to the mural, like which is kind of life size. And they and, like I look at them, and they're like, "We're just trying to hide from the jailer, man. We're trying to hide from the jailer." And I'm like, "Oh, so huh. they, they performed too?" Yeah, they were huh. like, but I mean, you, I, Guzman doesn't let fucking convicts just roll around the French Quarter and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, Actually, he does. He does. Um, and they pick up trash and shit. No, they don't pick up any trash, but they they sometimes they get out and go down there by themselves. Yes. Really? Yes. I can put it in the show notes. It was a thing that happened uh, maybe last year or the year before. Okay. Well, I was shocked yeah, to okay. see that. And then they got in the truck and then they left <clears throat> by themselves. Nobody mm-hmm. was watching them. I went and I ate at a steak place and I had a steak that was so good I almost ate the gristle. We go to sleep. We watch Game of Thrones that night. Um, the Night King killed a dragon. <laughs> okay. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Thank you for the... Jeez. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad that got included. Also, everybody went to bed and I just sat up and fucking drank also, whiskey. And Didn't Jamie die? Wasn't that a thing? Not that episode. Oh. Later. 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 But he did? This season? Oh, you don't even know? No, no I can't uh, tell you. I'm, oh, I'm not telling you. No, he died. Sure. I heard he did. We wake up the next morning. You, you're behind on your TV. The whole time. Did you watch that fucking show? I am fucking stressed out so bad about there being clouds. Because you make this fucking journey to see this thing. Yeah. It could be deep six. Right. By just fucking... Normal weather patterns. You had to you know? suffer through all those saltines and the steaks and the whatever. And that was kind of the point. But right. really, if we didn't see it, it was going to fucking really suck. Yeah. And the day before, at the exact time of the eclipse. It's not like Stand By Me. It's not like the journey is We want to see fucking right. the dead kid, man. Right. Uh, I forgot his name. Anyways. You're there and you're worried about the clouds. There's clouds around. There's clouds around this thing. They're day. fucking with you. Yeah, and I'm like... It just takes one to just drift in front of the motherfucker, and then that's that. Really? Yes. If you, I mean, you gotta, you gotta see it like the way. It, one cloud will fuck it up. Mm. I mean, yeah, it'll get dark like it did here, but you really need to see the fucking totality. Yeah. We also uh, we made a little uh, metal song called Totality, and it was just like, oh good, to the to totality. <laughs> Two hours to totality. Two minutes to totality. No, 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 no. Two seconds to totality. And then you wait two seconds. Totality. Did you actually do that during the event? Totally. Okay. Oh, as to- it became totally. closer, because there's a lot of fucking people in polo shirts and white and fucking pleated shorts there. Right. So when you see fucking crazy motherfuckers with sideburns and a former punk rock club manager. Rocking out the metal. They're going to fucking stare at you and shit. I mean, there was Mennonites there and everything. Oh, yeah. Well. So the eclipse starts. The light starts to change. You start to see all the little crescents, which y'all probably saw around here, right? Uh, Yeah, I saw the crescents, and the light changed a little bit. And, but not uh, as much as I think some people said it did. Because, like, I was outside for a lot of it, and it didn't feel that much different. It felt, it felt noticeably different. I mean, I... I, went, I tried to experience it as much as possible. I went out and sat out there, and I, I, it I was made those, I made the little camera obscura boxes I did too. at work, um, which every it was hilarious because I made a couple of them in like five minutes or whatever. It wasn't that fucking hard, uh, and I brought them outside, and everyone was like, "Oh, whoa, what is that?" And I was like, "Oh, it's a you know, it's an indirect." camera this is how it works blah 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 and they're like oh did you make that I was like yeah it was super and they're like oh awesome and everyone wants to use it and then one person walks outside with a pair of the glasses 
And everyone's like, fuck this box. <laughs> Let me see the glasses. <laughs> and there was a glasses <laughs> shortage down here, right? But yeah. We all took turns looking at the glasses. And they, it was a lot better. But then for the rest of the day, I felt like I had, like, uh, I felt like eye strain. Like, like it, my eyes were kind of sore. And I was like, how did I fuck this up? I, no, I did. I was, I was safe. God damn it. And then I saw that picture of Trump looking directly at the oh, sun. Yeah. And I was like, oh, the, he's so stupid. <laughs> yes. What if he actually burned his eyes? Like, what a fucking moron. It, it's, like our smooth brained president. My uh, oh. my buddy Cookie, he's not a supporter, but he is definitely like always going to critically think about everything and always question everything. And he saw those pictures of Trump. He's like, ah, I bet you it's an old picture. It's an old picture. I was like, I bet you a hundred dollars. It's fucking real. Seems like exactly the type of thing he would do. Absolutely. And it was. It doesn't really matter though. I mean, you can. It's just like the sun on any day. Like you can glance up at the sun. And look away. You cannot just glance up at the sun without fucking seeing a little sun in your a little green yeah, sun it, in your eye for hurts. two or three minutes. Yeah, it hurts to look at the sun for a second. But if you're explained not to by the fucking foremost experts around, and it's been talked about for two weeks not to do it, you gotta think there is actually. And you're the leader of the fucking country. You gotta think, hey, there's actually a fantastic. Don't do it in uh, front of cameras. There's a fantastic essay by Sam Chris about this. And it's about uh, the uh, political defiance in the act of looking directly into the sun. And it was a really good essay. It's it's about how uh, you know, like this, it, it's the sun. You know, it's there. It, it, like it, it's like it governs everything, and it gives everything life. And it's the reason that we're here. But you're not supposed to fucking look directly at it. And you know, why do you have to obey that one command? Like it's almost like you're. Like, we have to. Like, we were obligated to, like, stare at that motherfucker. Because who the fuck are they to tell us? It's kind of... It's, this isn't... Oh, that, so it's a way of being defiant to the point of destroying yourself. A little bit, but also just defiant because we're... Because what should have that kind of power over you in, in your choices? But also, just in the, in, in the course of making this larger, you know, silly argument... He talks about the different people who have looked directly into the sun and recorded their observations of it. And uh, I think Newton looked into the sun and mm -hmm. some uh, other famous people who have looked into the sun and like taken notes about what happened to them and how long they lost their eyesight for and like what it looked like and what they experienced. The, there's this defining like human, like it's part of the human spirit and experience to not take shit from the man and to and to and to look directly at the goddamn sun if we want to look directly at the goddamn sun. I just thought it was really that's well. A really we'll have cool to read article. the essay because I'm somehow unconvinced by your description. Of okay, it. I'm sure you would be. So, but, <laughs> anyways, at the at the risk of because you know yeah we have to move on. Um, the the eclipse begins. The little crescents start to form throughout the trees. We lay down in it. Um, there's a band across the street, and they're playing all kinds of moon songs and sun songs and stuff. It's a little Dixieland band. For whatever reason, right before, I'm assuming it's because of the crescents, they play, apropos of nothing, do you know what it means to Miss New Orleans? I don't know why they started playing it. Okay. I think maybe because of the crescents. Hmm. Anyways, that was nice. Then... At the, like, look, when there is barely any of that fucker left, like a sliver of this fucker left, like if I was taking, like if I was looking at it and I was starting to take my glasses off and a little piercing of it hit my eye, I would see fucking green, a spot of green everywhere I looked yeah. for two or three minutes. Okay. Um, so I tried not to do that. Then it slowly began to eclipse and at the very end... You can see bits of the sun shooting through mountains on the moon. And they start to appear as like tiny little just... The sun then becomes like a, a series of uh, a crescent circles. Because it is mostly eclipsed and the only thing keeping it from being totally eclipsed are is the terrain of the moon. 
and it, it forms this series of like a dozen or so little dots that you can see through your glasses. Then it goes away and it's completely dark. The cicadas start going and stuff like that. And then there's like kind of nothing for a while. And then that image that you see eclipses just goes and it's fucking big. It's like way bigger than the sun. And then you can just fucking take your glasses off and just fucking look at it. And everyone is like going through these these fucking series of emotions, you know. You're you're seeing something that basically I'm I'm willing to bet nobody there has ever seen, right? It got and, dark. Uh no, it was still light. Okay. You know, the 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 shit reflecting off the side of it kept it about I don't know like just before sunset type look like type feel but the horizon around you you could see where the totality wasn't happening Be- and it was bouncing off the atmosphere so what you saw was a like a 300 and, a sunset in all directions like it wasn't just one in one it wasn't like it was dark over here and it was light over there it was dark up there and light around you right you know and everybody had to stop and focus on you know the universe you know astronomy doesn't get most people like stars are this amazing thing the 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 rising and setting of the sun is an amazing thing the moon is an amazing thing uh the cassini probe in Saturn was these are all these amazing fucking things that happen and everybody around here on Earth and all of us are all just so terrestrial that for one little moment we all had to fucking we all chose to gaze up at this fucking beautiful thing that's only fucking that is not even supposed to happen like the moon is not fucking supposed to just be exactly the same fucking size as the sun and this thing is not supposed to just happen like this like very few places in the fucking universe have fucking eclipses like this you know they are exactly the same fucking size you know well they aren't but in perspective they are right right this is not fucking supposed to happen it's a very rare thing that humanity What are you trying to say, Jeff? I, no, I'm not. I'm just saying that it's. I know. No, yeah. you're, you're eclipse hating, which is why I was hating on you. I'm not hating on it thing. at all. I'm not hating at all. I, I, I'm just. To me, the interesting thing is that we understand fully what exactly is happening and therefore are not overly awed by it or intimidated by it or made didn't to feel. Say we were or made to feel by it, small by it. I did say we it. were awed by it. Because you're a terrestrial, because you're exactly the type of person that lives terrestrially. I believe that humans can know and therefore overcome, like, the challenges that nature throws at them, or, like, it's, like, it's within our scope of... Nature seems to me to be, like, shit that happens on Earth. It's very weird to describe the universe as nature. It's a very man-made term, like... Oh, trees are nature. The oceans are nature. The fucking Holly Grove peacock is nature. <laughs> this is something fucking far vaster. It's to, to to describe it as nature would be to kind of undermine it. Nature extent. on a grand scale. It's all it's all nature. It is. It's a it's a very natural thing, but it's a it's a nature that contains within it properties that are almost that that are beyond human comprehension right. whereas well, Holly Grove Peacock we can pretty much understand him he makes sense fish cows African elephants they all can be like grabbed and figured out because they are within our grasp of understanding shit beyond that goes outside of yeah, our of it, our understanding uh, yeah I think I fundamentally disagree with you on that just because it, it, I I, I I don't think anything is beyond our capacity to understand. I mean, um, there's 11 dimensions, and we live in four of them. As far as we know now. You see what I'm getting at? Like, it's not... It's, I mean, we have 
a certain amount of cerebral we, we can define the capabilities. Thing. We can define the thing as long with the, with once we've collected enough information about it, we can define it and therefore understand it and therefore have as much dominion over it as we need. Blissfully ignorant. No. We can be blissfully ignorant about it and say, "Oh yeah, I'm sure we can understand that." No, not blissfully ignorant. To know it completely, to to stare at the sun, to like say, "No, we're not going to be dominated by it. We're going to dominate it not by saying, knowing it." Fully. Nobody said we're dominated by it, but you can be awed by it, and you can appreciate it. That, that something that shouldn't fucking that only happens on this planet. Well, it only happens in your lifetime and on a certain scale of time, and you aren't the uh, it's, moon is it's, a, right. It's not available. It is framed up exactly for that fucking it's thing. Not a, it's not available for you to see and witness every day. It happens on uh, you know or, or, in certain spots in the in the world at you know at limited every two times, years, every couple of years. So you have to go and be in a certain place at a certain time in order to witness it. Therefore, it is not an everyday occurrence. But no matter where it happens on Earth, it only happens because the moon is this particular size. And the sun is that particular size. Yes. So. Yes. And in about. That is super fucking rare. And in about 600 million years, it will no it longer won't be happen possible. happen right. at all. Right. So, by yeah. all means, take your time. Be in awe of it. Besides, I have the standing to comment on this. Because I've seen the motherfucker. You lack the standing to comment on it. Because you've never gazed upon it. You've seen it in pictures and shit. Yeah, I saw it on CNN. You, they did uh, yeah, it several times. They, it was yeah, kind of cool. They did it all across the country. Yeah, It was very nice and very communal to witness with everybody. And to yeah, see Yeah, I would have liked to have done that. that. It made me immediately regret not doing it. Well, you know, you can, you can do it in a couple years. Uh, I think... I can't in remember. In Chile. No, no, no. In a few years, you can drive to Dallas, uh, Dallas or uh, a few years if, after if that. If by a few years, you mean 2024. Yeah. In 2019, you can see it in Chile. Okay. That but 2047, different. you can see it in Pensacola. In Pensacola, Florida, right. And then in like 2016. Me and my friend Cookie hope to do from our Little Rascals. And then or whatever they have for us at that point, which will probably be fucking Little Rascals. <laughs> So, but then if you miss those in about like 2060 something, you can take a boat out to where New Orleans used to be. Oh, okay. Sure. And watch it from yeah, there. Yeah, I'll be in the gulag by then. But yeah, in the all, gulag. <laughs> okay, I don't you, think we're going to make it. You flip on CNN from the gulag. Yep. And, uh, but it was, um, it was yeah, a very nice a, moment. Put a bow on this here. Yeah. When, it, when it first just showed itself, and then for two minutes and 30 seconds, you can just look right at it. You can be that. Whoever the fuck that essay, whatever the fuck that essay <laughs> tried to say was so amazing, you can do it and not lose your eyesight. Okay. And not have to deal with all the shit afterwards. You can just look at it. And then as soon as it starts to move past, a tiny little bit of the sun shoots out. The corona is still there and everything. And it looks like a diamond ring. And it starts to fucking hurt your eyes again, and then you got to look away. And then you got about another two hours of just still gazing, still looking at the light. The light was very. I'm gonna have to look up as to why. But the light was very blue. It was a bluish light, you know. Uh, maybe it has to do with red shifting or blue shifting or something like that. But and it was very sharp. It wasn't like a sunset where it's all you know. Sunsets they have a very soft light, you know. It was a very detailed sharp light you know where it was darker but you could also see all kinds of little you know it was very very okay very defined um then it went away and then we just decided uh tisha and i we were gonna show paducah how to party we went out and we got all fucked up and danced and encouraged the band to play fucking metallica and stuff sure you uh, teach them your totality song uh no no, okay. no we didn't go that far it was just a, a, a music teacher and his three, like, little 15-year-old fucking music oh, kids. Yeah. And they were playing rock. And the kids had some fucking groupies. <laughs> um, and then I was walking home. And, like, I walked by this moonshine museum or whatever. They have a full fucking copper still just sitting out on the fucking sidewalk. Well, yeah, where else would you put it? Well, if you live in New Orleans, you're not going to fucking put it out on the sidewalk. <laughs> it's just going to get jacked. 
Also, another thing happened. I was at a bar right bef- the day before the eclipse. There was a guy sitting at the bar. He had obviously showed up to Paducah to fucking sell some weed, right? Because he had asked us if we wanted some weed. Well, and that's, I was like, that's how you knew. And I was, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I was like, no, nah, man, we're good. We're good. Because I'm like immediately suspicious of anyone, right? And he's like, all right, man, I just brought so much weed. And I was trying to unload some of it. And I was like, oh, well, we don't want none. He's like, all right. And this dude is like fucked up. He's like, man, you know, I brought like fucking thousands of dollars of weed with me. I'm sleeping in my car and I'm trying to sell it. I'm trying to get a hotel room. I was like, well, I don't want it. He's like, I got it right here. And he's got like this backpack between his legs and everything. I was like, sorry, dude. I, I mean, I just, I, I, we don't need no weed. So he's like, all right. And he's sitting there like almost passing out of the wall at the bar. And I'm in this like fucking Mayberry type you know, situ, you know, place. Yeah. I'm from New Orleans, and I'm thinking, I have to fucking beat this guy up and take his weed. I just got to. So this, that was, this is what you did? I got no. Well, oh. no. I mean, I, I wrestled with myself for a little while. I was just like, should I fucking pull a caper on this dude just for him being such a goddamn mark? Mm. To tell people that he need that he's got a fucking bag full of weed and he's sleeping in his car and he's as fucked up as he is? I mean, do French Quarter fucking rules apply right now? The French Quarter rules are you are obligated to beat him up, take his weed, I felt in order as though, to teach him a lesson. No, These not to teach rules. him a lesson. Just just because, hey, you can just I could just fucking just get ten thousand dollars worth of weed from this dude right fucking now because he is such a fucking. Mark. But that's not what you were thinking. You were thinking I need to do this in order for him to learn. Well, no, no, I'm not. It's not up to me to teach him a fucking lesson. Okay, but then you were, you were street literally rules, thinking... Street rules were in effect. You were thinking street I should apply. take it in order to just... Everything I've ever okay. been taught has been like, don't fucking do everything this fucking dude is doing. Right, okay. And I've never been in a position before to ever, because street rules have always been in effect. Everyone's been playing by the fucking rules. Right. It's another situation where you I didn't don't know understand the rules, the rules. but right. I at least knew enough to be like, "Hey, man, it wouldn't take much for me just to steal all this guy's fucking weed and whatever money he's made so far." Right. But I didn't. Well, nor did I take that copper still. Good for you. Nor did I convince those guys who were riding around in their truck. Hey, man, why don't y'all just bounce and head to Chicago, man? Because again, this is Mayberry. This is right. In, I don't know the rules in yet. Mayberry. You just have your weed out, and I guess. it's fine. I don't know the email. Maybe, the- there's, maybe they're socialists. Maybe they share their weed. Maybe. Maybe. I just came with a different fucking mindset, I guess. I guess being in the French Quarter yeah. for as long as I have, and seeing people fucking jacked up all the time, and just seeing the shit that I see in Jackson Square and on yeah. the streets here, I was just like, I, I have to. Somebody's going to. It might as well be me. I guess I like, that was my motivation. I like how you called it pull a caper. That's a phrase that we should all use more often. <laughs> all right, so, anyways, and then we drove straight back to uh, Jackson and went to this other place that was right by Saltine <laughs> called Babalu. Okay. Tisha told me I always sit at the bar at restaurants. She goes, we li-, she goes, I'd like to sit at a table sometime, you know. I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, every time we fucking come to a restaurant, the hostess asks us where we want to sit, and you always say the bar. And I'm like, when? And then she like named like ten fucking times. I was like, yeah, you're right. I'm like, all right, well, we'll fucking sit at a table sometime. Okay. But fuck a table, right? And Lance's heart grew three sizes that day. Yeah. I would rather the bar is where all the action is. You don't you don't get shitty service at the bar because the bartender's just right there. Uh, I disagree. Uh, I went to a place in D.C. and I sat at the bar and I had awful service. But you don't know what it would have been like if you sat at the table. So not enough data. Okay, fair. Tables, waitress is going to ignore you. That bartender, man, hard to ignore you. Also, mm. quicker booze. Anyways, we drove straight home through the Natchez truck. Natchez Trace Parkway. Yeah, my favorite. Beautiful fucking. We got Isn't a little. Isn't it the best? It is the best. Oh, it's the best. We got a little glimpse of it. Carved by animals, migrating animals. Jeff created the Natchez Trace Parkway. All right, and so then you came back. Something else happened. No. Yes. <laughs> Nothing else happened. <laughs> 
So that may have been it. Okay. This is a, a grand odyssey uh, through Mississippi. You're forgetting something to though. the uh, to the to the solar eclipse and back. That's a that's a that's a full thing there. That's a whole uh, might even be a whole show actually. Um, you still think there's so. something else? Oh, we stopped at the Windsor Ruins. Oh yeah, that's another great place. You went there? Yeah. Fucking right. I like the Windsor Ruins because they're a fucking good metaphor for the destruction of the old fucking South, man. Yeah. You want to go look at that crumbling, like a real fucking metaphor, physical metaphor for the crumbling of the fucking Southern, of the fucking Confederacy. The Windsor Ruins are a great fucking example of it. Just those pillars are left, baby. Nothing mm. else. Also, the pillars are the hardest ones to get down, you know? It's, um... You get off the trace, and then you still gotta like go through Port Gibson, and then you gotta get on that road for like ten miles. Yeah, a it winding is, road. It is in the middle of nowhere. Uh, there's a college near there, huh? Yeah, Alcorn State. Yeah, they were in the NCAA tournament a while back. That's how you learn colleges. <laughs> I <was gonna> say, <laughs> like, <laughs> they're in the they're in the final. They're in the sixty four. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, and then guys. we came home. Yeah. Everything was fine. Yay! Yay, it was pretty good. Yeah, it was beautiful. All okay, right. well, so we... Uh, Civil Rights Tour of the South, so basically. I'm, it was pretty good. I'm fading. Yeah, we got to wrap this up. Um, we've been doing this for a couple of hours, actually. Uh, um, I guess that's all we got. Yeah. All right, guys. Bye. So, Bye. 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 Bye.